Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our lecture series on the statement of cash flows. In the prior video, we completed the operating activities section of the statement of cash flows for Gazelle Corporation. In this video, we'll prepare the investing and financing activities sections and complete the statement. This lecture is a continuation of video lecture 12.9. You will need either the PDF version of the worksheet or the Excel workbook for Gazelle Corporation that you started in that lecture. If you don't have it, please download and print the worksheet or download the Excel workbook and go back to video lecture 12.9 so you can catch up before continuing with this video. As shown on the format that we've been following, the UMA company example, on page 469 of your textbook. The next thing we need to do is report cash flows from investing activities. And by looking at exhibit 12.4 on page 455 of your textbook, when we're building the investing activities section of a cash flow statement, we want to take a look at changes in long-term assets and report those changes that resulted from the receipt of cash or the payment of cash. We do know that we had a net increase in equipment during the year, which means that we must have purchased some equipment, and we know by looking at the information, additional information given to this problem, we covered it quite thoroughly in the last video lecture, that we also sold some equipment. And we need to pick up the cash received from the sale of equipment and the cash paid for new equipment. So coming back down to the uh, additional information, in number A, it says we sold equipment for $26,050 cash. So cash received from the sale of equipment. $26,050. Cash flows from investing activities. Cash received from sale of equipment. $26,050. In number B, it says that we purchased equipment paying $43,250 cash. So cash paid for the purchase of equipment, $43,250. Cash paid for equipment, $43,250 in brackets because it's cash going out the door. And net cash used in investing activities then is $17,200 in brackets. Cash going out the door was $43,250 minus cash coming in the door, $26,050, leaves net cash used in investing activities of $17,200. Next section. By looking at our UMA company example, now we want to do cash flows from financing activities. And looking at the Exhibit 12.4, when we're building our financing section of the cash flow statement, we want to take a look at changes in long-term liabilities and in equity and report those changes that arose because of a receipt of cash or a payment of cash. Cash flows from financing activities. Now let's go take a look at the financial data we have and see what we can do with this. We know we have some long-term debt and we know that it changed during the year. The debt actually increased during the year. So what we need to do is find out if we paid uh, cash to reduce our long-term notes payable and if we receive cash on additional long-term notes payable. And you can't tell that by this line. You have to look at additional information. 
as discussed in pretty great detail in the last video, yes, number C says we borrowed 5,000 cash by signing a long-term note payable. So cash received on long-term note payable, $5,000. Number D says we paid 47,500 cash to reduce the long-term notes payable. So not only did we borrow more money on a long-term note payable, but we also made some payments on the note payable throughout the year. So cash paid on long-term note payable, $47,500. Let let's get those in our cash flow statement. Then we'll look at the changes in equity. Again, receipt of cash is expressed as a positive number and cash paid is expressed as a negative number. So cash received from long-term note payable, $5,000. Cash paid on long-term note payable, negative 47,500. But we're not done with this section because changes in the, in the balance sheet in long-term debt and in the equity accounts that arose because of receipt of cash or payment of cash all flow through the financing section. So we need to take a look at our change in the equity accounts. Common stock and paid in capital in excess of par increased by a total of $45,000. And we found that that cash uh, that arose, that change arose from the receipt of $45,000 in cash. Issuing 3,000 shares at $15 a share is a receipt of $45,000 cash. So cash received from stock issuance or from issuing common stock and then paying dividends also is an equity transaction. So cash paid for dividends. 53,600. Let's get those two items into our financing section. Cash received from issuing common stock, $45,000 as a positive number because cash came in the door. Cash paid for dividends, 53,600 negative number because cash paid was paid out. So plus, minus, plus, minus and more cash was paid out than came in, so net cash used in financing activities, 51100 in brackets. It would be okay if you said here, cash received from issuing stock. That would be okay too. The next thing we need to do is calculate our net increase in cash. It could be net uh, decrease in cash, but in this case it is a net increase because cash provided by operating activities was 130200 which is more, considerably more, than the cash used in investing activities and the cash used in financing activities. So plus minus minus equals an increase in cash for the year of 61,900. Now we want to drop in our cash balance from last year. That's our beginning cash plus the increase in cash should calculate our ending cash balance. We need to find this on the balance sheet. The ending cash balance at the end of December 31st, 20X1 was $61,550. The beginning cash balance plus the net increase in cash, add those two numbers together and you calculate an ending cash balance on your statement of cash flows of 123450 
and we're not we're finished with our cash flow statement unless we identify that we made some errors and we need to check to see if we made some significant errors so i need to see if this count cash balance that we calculated on our cash flow statement equals the cash balance at the end of the year on the balance sheet and yes it does the balance sheet says we have 123,450 cash and that's what we calculated on our statement of cash flows so at least we know there aren't any significant errors on our statement of cash flows and i'm satisfied with the statement well that's all for this lecture when we come back in our next video lecture we're going to do another statement of cash flows of relatively similar complexity to Gazelle. And I'm going to turn you loose on it. I'm going to give you the financial data and refer you to page 455 of your textbook for Exhibit 12.4 and page 469 of your textbook for the UMA example. You'll have lined paper just like you had here and you will calculate and prepare the entire cash flow statement and then you'll start the video again and check your work. See you next time.